All right, good evening, everybody. God bless you. I love all y'all, my friends, my family, the fellow bride of Christ, the body of Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the head. Amen. Hey, guys, be the body of Christ. D don't be a jerk. What is that guy's name? Sean just shared him with me again. Marcus Rogers. That idiot has been hollering at you. You know, Sunday I mentioned people being OCD for God, and they're actually OCD for Satan, wrong God. He's one of these. And he defies once saved, always saved. He hates it with a passion. Repent and be baptized, he says. Jesus says believe. Guys, if you're going to be saved, if you're going to be one of us in the kingdom of heaven, that means, you know, the raptured saved bunch, you must only be saved by grace through faith. You can't pull off this Marcus Rogers Satanism, okay? He talks about another Jesus, another Lord, another gospel, uh, you know, Satan's script. Stay away from that. Stay away from work. Stay away from self-righteousness. Stay away from you getting you saved and you keeping you saved because you were such a good little girl. You were a good boy, and, and boy, you kept all those laws, and boy, Jesus then could keep you saved because you were so good. Satanism, dude. Satanism. Satanism places you forward. What is Satanism? The worship of self. And you thinking you can save you or keep you saved through your repentance and through your righteousness and self-righteous, dude. Self-worship. Satanism is what you believe. Satanists don't go to heaven. Only humble people who have realized that Jesus is their Savior and they have humbled themselves, they've repented. That means they've changed their thinking from whatever it was to that. Jesus is Savior and His death, burial, and resurrection paid your price in full. We look at that, man, in the Shroud of Turin codes. Okay? The Shroud of Turin is the receipt that Jesus Christ actually died. He was buried and He rose again of His own power. He exploded. His power exploding through those clothing, giving us his form, his shape in 3D. Exactly, we saw delineated just like the Father planned. Crease for crease, line, blood here, light explosion here, negative look here, the face here, and everything was perfect. Let's get that broken nose shown. Let's show that. And everything was perfect, just like the Father commanded in that sheet. And it happened just like that. And you must believe that Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection is only and all that it takes to be saved. And your faith in that. Nothing else that you bring. You're a wicked, lost, terrible, no, good for nothing sinner. And you're in quicksand dying. And you're up to your nose. Your nostrils are just about almost covered. And along comes Jesus. And you recognize, hey, there's one that can save me. And you look around. Well, it looks like he's the only one that can save me. Lord, I need saving. Jesus, save me. I believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. And you're saved. He's the only one who can save you. He's the only one who could pull you out of your ditch, your, your furnace, your death throes. Amen? Trust in the Lord. Hey, Carlos is here, man. He says, hey, family. Hey, brother. Robert. Hi, family. Oh, Robert had me laughing today. His brother was my boss for eight years, and he's the one we... Uh, Borrowed the cafe from when we were doing church at the cafe uh, 12 years ago on Facebook. His wife said, guys, please pray for the devil. And he is so sick. He, and he was, dude. He, he, has, he has kidney issues, uh, kidney stones. And, and I can't remember what exactly happened here, but he was he's sick as a dog. And, and you'll never hear it out of his mouth, you know. Um, he doesn't complain. He doesn't whine. But his wife, in great concern for him, said, guys, please pray. So we were praying, man, bam. Well, he's a clown. This guy, this guy is some kind of clown. He is funny. And uh, so 12 years later, yesterday, he goes, well, I, I guess I'm okay. And people totally missed that it was a 12-year-old post. Oh, we're praying for you, Dev. Oh, Lord, help the guy. Please help him. And uh, it popped up on my screen that Robert laughed at it. Robert's his brother. And he says, this made me laugh. And I'm like, dude, this made me laugh too. Because I was in, in the original prayer warriors back there 12 years ago praying for the guy. So that's funny. So mark your dates is what we're getting at, folks. Know what time it is. Okay? This ain't 12 years ago. This is now. We're 12 years closer to the rapture than we were then. Amen? Amen. 
we're 12 days closer than we were 12 days ago. We're getting closer and closer and closer, man. And so get to know the Lord. Get ready to be raptured. But you can only be raptured if you're saved by grace through faith alone. Once saved, always saved. So become a believer like that and you'll be saved. The Holy Spirit will come inside you and ignite you, charge you, emboss you, impress you. And he will, boom, infuse you with his perfect righteousness. And that is the ticket to heaven. And that is infused only when you believe. So we encourage you to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, his finished work, and you'll be saved. Amen? Amen. So once you get saved, once you start reading your Bible, uh, if, if, if I personally led you to the Lord, I would say, okay, we've got to make sure you're saved. How are you saved? And you would tell me back how you know you're saved. Because I believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Is there anything you can do to get you saved? No. Is there anything you can do to keep you saved? No. So how are you saved? By faith alone, through grace alone. It's a free gift from Jesus Christ by believing in his death, burial, and resurrection. And when I do that, he infuses me with his righteousness. Okay, so you're saved. If you died right now, where are you going? To? I'm going to heaven. Good. Now, start reading 10 to 20 chapters every day. That's, ex that's exactly straight where I would go with this guy. Shut your TV off. And I'll, I'll we'll, we'll give you a, a chance and say just shut off your, your worst show that you is just a pastime waiting to get to your next show. Why don't you shut that one off every night? Choose which one that is, that half hour, that half hour show. And why don't we read 10 chapters in your Bible? And then I direct them right to how to do it. The, the audio, listen to this, whatever version's best for you. You got this sample, this sample, this example, follow these, whichever one you prefer the most, get busy, man. King James is where I'm gonna get you. But I don't understand the King James. Well, the guy reading it to you does. So just listen to him and it will flow, bro. I promise you. So we get him going, 10 to 20 chapters, 10 to 20 chapters. And, and then you start sharing with me what the Lord teaches you. And I'll be asking you questions daily. And that's why we do this daily. I'm asking you questions. Are you reading your Bible? What's the Lord teaching you? Are you growing in the Lord? Are, are, are you coming to know him in a better way? Then we introduce you to the Bible codes. Do you think that God, who can save all men who believe, who can do the impossible, do you think it's impossible for him then to put his word inside his word? No. Okay. And you could take you could take a new Christian and train them right. It's hard to take a seminary professor and show him the Bible codes. He won't believe them because he's preached against them too long. He's read too many books. He's become so smart. Oh, he read a Dr. Michael Heiser book who said God just, there was no way that our God would Put a code inside the Bible. And see, people believe him because he's a Hebrew scholar. But you know what the Bible told us about that Hebrew scholar? He's burning in hell and woke up surprised to be choking on the smoke. Such an arrogant cuss. This guy also wrote a book about how God needs a divine counsel to counsel him. When the plain text say, says he doesn't need anybody to advise him. He doesn't need anybody to counsel him. And everybody has run crazy with that at the seminary. Oh, the divine counsel. I never heard that before. Well, the reason you never heard it before is because he pulled it straight out of his tailpipe, which came from Satan's tailpipe. And now they're preaching it as doctrinal truth and fact, and God hates it. He abhors this heresy. So when we disciple you, we say, hey, you're saved by grace. Once saved, always saved. We get you reading 10 to 20 chapters, and we introduce you to the Bible code. And the Bible code is what we do by God's grace in the evenings every night, every day of the week at 726 Central Standard Time. 726 is special to us because that is the number in the Greek New Testament. When you, when you look at Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and you look up Greek, the number 726, it's Harpazo, it's the rapture. The catching away, the snatching away, the caught up. Amen. And so we're here. We're looking for our blessed hope, Jesus Christ. He promised he's going to come get us. Guys, he's going to come get us. And he promised us in the coded text that it's going to be at Pentecost, the fourth candle. And here we are. We find ourselves in Pentecost right now. We are counting. Uh, pray for the two witnesses. I see that note. Pray for Sean and his twin. That's the two witnesses in the book of Revelation, the two candlesticks, the two lampstands, and the two olive trees who stand before the Lord. And they'll be here witnessing the first three and a half years of the tribulation. Sean, the guy who, who gives us these Bible codes that we preach from every night, he's the one who discovered what God had covered. He God had sealed them up, and Sean's been called by God to come along and unseal them. And we now have 531 of these things, 
in a book, an ebook, and it's free. And she, Heather, puts the link up here every night, download that thing, and become familiar with it, okay? And so God is powerful enough. Since there's nothing too big for him or too difficult for him or nothing is impossible for him, he has placed a wonderful secret code in the Bible that's no longer secret. It's only secret to people who won't search it out. But the diligent are being made fat, being made rich in this stuff, man. And so we are the diligent. We want you to be part of the diligent. And diligently every day we come and we share and we discuss these Bible codes. And we want you to understand it. Amen. So pray, pray, pray for the tribulation saints. Pray for the 144,000 witnesses. Pray earnestly, guys. Don't just say, hey, yeah, Lord, you know, thank you for my peanut butter sandwich and, you know, watch those witnesses. Why don't you get serious with your prayer? Get specific with your prayers. Okay? Amen. Robert says, it was hilarious because people couldn't see it. <laughs> it was. It, 12 years, guys. It was a 12-year-old prayer request that had been answered. <laughs> and and his brother says, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm better off. And people just ran with it, guys. That's why it's important. All these guys preaching on YouTube are saying things and people run with it without checking it, without verifying it, without reading the Bible themselves. That's why we encourage you to read the Bible so much so you'll be able to verify the truth when you hear it. Amen? And you'll be able to say, oh, oppose the liars when you hear the lies. Amen? Yeah, that was pretty cool, Robert. Had me laughing too. Brent says they're trying really hard to make that uh, fake peace deal. USA is on it, man. Yeah. Uh, Heather says, that Heiser dude was counseled by s devils. Amen. Pride. He was. He was. He, he's burning in hell. Died at 60. Pancreatic cancer. And the Bible gives all the details about his death. God couldn't stand the guy. God can't stand him. Burning in hell right now. Because that's your default, guys. You're, it, it ain't the fact that, oh, you messed up. Now I'm going to throw you to hell. The, the fact is, every human being who's of age, past the age of innocence, who can declare right and wrong, and God knows what age that is. What is that, 11, 12, 13, 14? Somewhere in there. Everybody past that age, your default is hell. And so that's why the good news of the gospel comes to you and says, man, you don't have to go. You do not have to go to hell. Jesus came and he died for you. He took your place. He was, he was traded uh, on your behalf. He traded places with you. He did it of his own voluntary will, his volition. And he said, Father, if I go and become a human, I will become the substitute for all humans who have to go to hell, and I will take their sin, all of their sin that deserves hell and punishment, and I'll put it on me, and you judge me instead of them. Is that going to work? And that met the criterion. That met what God had considered as true justice, God's justice. And so Jesus dying in our place met the justice of God. Now, what's going to activate the perfection of God in you is not your self-righteousness. It's your belief. God honors belief. He loves faith. So believe, man. Believe ye this day. Amen. Uh, hey, brother JB and fam. Hey, Tyvon. Good to see you, buddy. God bless you. Why don't we look at some of these Bible codes, man? Boom. We're uh, here in Kentucky We're visiting my brother again. My brother is in the nursing home. And uh, so we uh, wanted to come and see him, give him a visit. We'd like to have somebody come up here. You know, he was taking care of my dad, and then they both had to end up coming to my, – my dad was on the nursing side, and my brother was on the rehab side because his ankle was so bad. It was eat up like leprosy. And um, it just won't heal. It won't get better. won't get better. And it's worked him into where he, he's in the nursing side, really. He's, he's not rehabbing at all. And he pretty much lays in the bed, but he's so excited every time I get here. You know, they keep him drugged out, the pain in his leg, and you know, just to keep him calm. And uh, every time I'm here, we talk about the rapture. He's excited. He said, what, 40, 42 days? I said, that's our high watch day. I said, we got high watch days two weeks before that, the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th. And he goes, like, dude, come on, I'm ready. I'm ready. I said, praise God. And we was able to bring him some pizza. And see, he don't he, he eats the nursing home food every day, th three meals a day. And he really doesn't get a touch of the outside food ever, ever. Uh, there's nobody there. He is there by himself in Kentucky. Dad's dead. Everybody else, we're scattered everywhere else. And so uh, I'm in communication. My brother Tom takes care of him, my oldest brother. And so he asks us, hey, why don't you guys go up there and see him again? I said, all right, we'll do it. So here we are. If you'd pray for my brother Steve, 
and uh, to keep him going. He's looked for Jesus for years, guys. He's looked for Jesus for years. And uh, I praise God about that. My dad did. I have. I've looked for Jesus to come rapture us. Amen. Ain't that good? Uh, does our loved ones in heaven know that they are about to get their... Yes, their new bodies. Yes. I would think uh, they know it's almost... Like, yes, yes. Because you and I know. They knew it because they read their Bibles. All the old timers, they knew it. They knew that uh, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, then we which are alive. Now they know that they're dead in Christ. And they're having some conversations in heaven. They're looking face to face with the word of God, Jesus. And they're all getting things ready. Remember, they've been finalizing your mansions. They've been putting the final touches on our mansions. You know, the people that got saved here in the latter days, they've put their mansions together and started building their mansions and preparing for their arrival, man. Okay, so yeah, they know they're ready. They're excited, dude. They don't have their glorified bodies in heaven. They look like the rest of the dead. Those glorified bodies are going to set us apart for seven years in heaven. The bride of Christ. The last group of those that were saved by grace through faith after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what began the church age. And everybody who's placed their faith in Jesus, we are the church. So people have been dying in the Lord for the last 1,994 years. Okay? Uh, 223 years, prophetic years. 2023. Big numbers, good numbers. Don't let these numbers blow past you and go, oh, some more of those BS numbers again. The reason I keep using that quote is because I was told that quote. One voice for a thousand of them. One voice for a million in this case. People just want to poo-poo and scoff the Bible codes, man, and the numbers that go with them. Hallelujah, what a huge blessing you two are to that nursing home. Glory to God, man. Amen. Yeah, uh, Mimi, is. we're down here in the heart of Kentucky, Missionary Baptist Church. I, I, now, I like that part. As you go through North Carolina and all these other places, you're going to find Free Will Baptist, General Baptist, um, Holiness, Church of God in Christ, da, 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 all this. And I'm seeing Baptist church after Baptist church after Baptist church. Now, what that tells me is they had a good foundation. The Missionary Baptist Church, for by grace are you saved through faith. Okay, That was their missional plan for years, years ago. So I'm glad they still have that influence here. But when you come to town and you see everybody with... Uh, all the hardware in their nose and their earrings and their tattoos and their I Love Satan bumper stickers. That's a whole different subset. And so they need Jesus Christ. So praise God, man. Uh, so here we are. Here we are. If you pray for one another. But the, the people in heaven are excited to get their bodies, guys. We are going to be a whole different crowd than anybody. We're going to be identifiable differently. We have the marriage supper of the Lamb, the bride. We have the judgment seat of Christ, not the 4,000 years of the Old Testament saints. We do. We were the last ones in, but we're the first ones blessed. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. And then at the end of the seven years, the Old Testament saints and the tribulation saints will get their bodies. And they're still going to be different. I don't know what that means. We're going to be glorified, and I don't know how much glory they're going to have or what, but... It's going to be awesome, but we're going to be different groups. And there's only one group, the Bride of Christ. That's us believers in the finished work of Jesus Christ for the past 2,023 years in the prophetic calendar, the 360-day calendar. Amen? 1,994 years on the Gregorian calendar since Jesus died for us. Amen? All right. Hey, Heather has got this link up here. He preached also with declaration. Is that where we are? Bam. He preached also with declaration. She's always got to keep me in line, man. All right. Thank you very much, sister. Let's see what this thing says. Let's see what Sean says. This is October 24th, 2022. Two years ago, nearly. Okay. Here we find ourselves in August. And uh, what is it? August 20th. Now, tomorrow, guys, please, 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 please be in wonderful meditation. I mean, God-fearing meditation tomorrow. That's the seven-year anniversary of God's warning he's coming to kill America. Be humble. Be holy before him tomorrow. Be that way now. We're, we always want to live holy in righteousness and holy reverence before our God. Even though we're his bride and even though all our sins have been forgiven and he's remitted our sin and he's put them on himself, we still understand his holiness and appreciate his awesomeness. And be holy tomorrow. 
in, be in great thought tomorrow. The 21st of August is the seven-year anniversary of that first eclipse that came across America, getting ready for the other two, which gave us that A for the Aleph, God. I, this is my signature, and I'm stamping you out. I'm double Xing you. There's two X's in that. Uh, original writing, three lines and two X's. That you know what that means. That's at the Aleph and Tav's. The Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. God wrote the big Aleph, and in that there's two Tav's. End in double end. You're done. The cursing X you out, and here that comes. And yesterday's or tomorrow is that seventh day anniversary. So please be humble in that. Write yourself a big fat note. Don't be retarded today. Be humble before an awesome God who's coming to judge this place. And you pray for your families to be saved. You pray for them to miss it if they won't be saved. Miss the judgment of God. Give them another day, Lord. Amen. Uh, Jesus cured leprosy. I'd be honored to have something. Yeah, Jesus cured. No kidding. No kidding. Glory to God, buddy. All right, let's look at this code. She's got the link up here. This is Sean's commentary to us. He said, how did the image on the Shroud of Turin form? Here we are again. Amen. You guys, this shroud is the best thing to us, a receipt. It's good for me. It changed my world. It changed my world. Tomorrow, I'm cleaning a house with, a, with great acoustics. I'm going to be singing my heart out to Jesus. All glory to God. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? It's like walking into those star-spangled bathrooms. With a great resonance in acoustics. Hello, hello, hello. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The thing you just ring it out, resonating. Good for you, sister. Praise God. All right. Amen. How did the image get on the shroud, man? How did it form? Let's go right to the source and find out. God says the radiance is burnt into the shroud. The shroud is not an artist forgery. That's what I used to think. Uh, because Satan, because of Satan and his being an angel of light and his faking it out and it being in the hands of the Catholics. I had all the good stuff, except I need a guy to tell me, no, buddy, this is, this is really real. This is, that's Jesus' face there. And I'm just using the Catholics because of their love for relics to keep the thing preserved till Sean comes back. And then he'll grab it from them, and he'll be showing all the Jews the face of Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. I believe, I believe. Hey, guys, when something comes in the Bible code, believe it. The Bible code is of Sean Mitchell. Just believe it. That's God's word in his dialect. Okay? You say, okay, yes, sir, Lord. And you change, you repent. You change your thinking to match God's thinking. That's what the word repent means. It doesn't mean go jump in a lake. It means think like God. Think like the scriptures. Change your thinking to match his. All right. And so this radiance is burned into the shroud. The shroud is not an artist's forgery. The glorious light of Jesus Christ of Nazareth created that image. So that humbles a fella. You say, yes, Lord. Okay, yeah, amen. Praise God. The image of the cloth, the shroud of Turin, at his resurrection. Glory to our God. Glory to God. And let's see what God's word says here. God's word in his dialect at that amazing skip of... Bam. 253,339. Five, 5, Going from the bottom up. And you see how many characters there are. This is an incredible skip, guys. This is God doing this. And it's too small for me to read what just the red letters say there. So let's just read what God has. The last word is Shroud of Yeshua. Okay, so here's the first line at that amazing skip. Okay, of 253,339 saying this. He preached also with a declaration. Truly, it is the hour for the Most High to give light. The burnt offering of God was pleasant. The radiance is burnt into the shroud of Yeshua. Now, does that sound like it goes together? Does it sound in a good flow, something God would say? Yes, because it is. It's God's word in his dialect. Do not poo-poo this. That's just one line going like this at those amazing skips of 253,000 negative, 339. Thanks, Tyvon. This is God's word in his dialect. Continue to listen. 
The innocent one flowed. He, he bled profusely. Jesus is the innocent one, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, and he flowed till every drop was dripped out of him on purpose. The innocent one flowed. You saw the redness. And well, who's he talking to? Everybody who's seen the Shroud of Turin have seen the red stripes in there. The blood's still there, guys. The blood that saves us. The blood that redeemed us. It paid our price in full, that blood. You saw, you've seen the red. You need to go bring up a picture. Sean showed several of them here in these codes. There's the red and there's the dark. It's there. And the Jews are going to see it. See, these Bible codes are for the Jews and they're going to see the Shroud of Turin and they're going to see the red and they're going to see his face and they're going to see the 3D images and they're going to see the sculptures that people have made from this thing because God delineated it perfectly and he spoke to the cloth and he said, you're going to catch every crevice, every crack, every blood stain that I want you to get. Get that three on his head and God gave the command and that cloth did exactly what it was supposed to do when Jesus shone forth. Praise God. His witnesses are everywhere. His receipts, his proofs are everywhere, man. Believe the proofs. Many infallible proofs. They're all over the place. And you people, you atheists who deny the proofs, you're just a freaking retard is all you are. You have an opinion and an agenda against God. You hate him. You say you don't believe him, but the truth is you just flat out hate him. So you're not going to like some stupid kid who, who won't listen to the teacher, who, who won't listen to those who have researched past your stupidity. Be on the, your rung where you stop. They went a couple rungs higher in the truth. We're inviting you to do that, and you be fair to yourself because you're, you're hellbound. You're going to a hell that you don't believe in, but you're going there. And you'll believe in it quickly, just like Dr. Heiser and the rest of all those idiot retards who've denied the finished work of Jesus Christ do. The religious bunch. Oh, man. The innocent one flowed. You saw the redness. You saw the blood. You will weep bitterly, and the Jews are going to weep bitterly when they see this thing. Mm. They're going to recognize that was my Messiah. That's Yeshua. That's the salvation of Yah right there. They're going to weep bitterly. My beloved imprint is from Jesus. The shroud talking to you. The, the, the imprint on me, the beloved imprint, my beloved imprint is Yeshua. What a joy, what a privilege to be that shroud. Not a relic, a testimony, a receipt. Paid in full. You see the blood? You see the impression? Oh, my sweet impression is sweet Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God, man. You will weep bitterly. My beloved imprint is from Jesus. Obviously, not an artist. It's obvious to me now. Uh, you gotta open your eyes, guys. You gotta open your eyes. Uh, it is genuine. Jesus is light. Ascribe to God the sight, the evidence, evidence of a fire. And there was a fire that took place. Almost burned it up. Satan wanted to get rid of this thing, and you can't get rid of what God wants. Okay, you can try, and there are some burnt edges in here, and there are some burnt edges that confused people for a long time, and they were coming up with the wrong analysis, the wrong year, until they had the right guys come in at the right time, you know, like the Bible Code guys back there in 1976 giving us the Bible Code program, and then in 1977, God had the guy come along that he wanted to open up the sealed scriptures to make them unsealed for us, Sean Mitchell of Canada, the Canadian fire, speaking of fire, there was a fire. God always uses fire in the testing of his witnesses, whether it's cloth or a human being. Withstand the fire, don't curse it. Be purified in it. Come forth as gold. Thus saith the Lord, the image of the face of Jehovah. Man, guys, this is God. This is God. And see, see, here's what's so cool. Here's what's so great. The disciples first generation of believers got to see him and none of us did until we got the shroud and now every one of us get to proudly and joyfully and just humbly look on his face that's him that's jehovah man that's god in the flesh coming here to save us and that's awesome to us and there it is whose face is that that's jehovah's yod hey vav hey's the righteous one and the payment was photographed. 
Oh, man. Secondo. Secondo Pia. He took a picture of it. And before he took a picture of it, God took a picture. Burned it right into that sheet. Burned it right into that cloth. God took a picture of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, raising from the dead. And then years later, Secondo Pia comes along and, you know, he, he takes another picture of it. And that's where we see the negative of the negative forms the picture of the man. And we get to see the face of Jesus Christ, man, evidently set forth before us. Now, here it is. Choose you this day. You're going to think this is a forgery? You're going to think this is the Catholics? You're going to think this is the devil? Or are you going to think this is the face of Almighty God and he did this and he took a picture? And then Secondo comes along. Secondo, Jesus was first-o when he took that picture. Secondo took it in the 1800s. Always know that in his name. He was the second one to take a picture of that picture. Jesus was the first one to take a picture of that image. And that image is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Jehovah, the righteous one. And the payment was photographed because the payment was included the resurrection. There had to be a resurrection or our debt wouldn't have been paid. Death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. The receipt's awesome. Blessings, family. Good to see you, Lila. Amen. The image of the, is the face of Jehovah, the righteous one, and the payment was photographed. Yeshua. He learned Jehovah is a lamp. You know, thy word is a lamp to my feet, a light unto my path. The heavens is God's Bible in the stars. The stars are God's Bible in the heavens. Jesus is God's Bible in the flesh. We have the 66 books of God's plain text Bible. This Bible code is the wonderful, awesome ELS, skipped letters of God's Bible, the unsealed, which had once been sealed Bible, and it's all for us. And God is speaking in many kinds of ways, and this Shroud of Turin, is just like that. It is a witness and it's preaching the face of the radiant, wonderful God. He's awesome. He learns Jehovah is a lamp. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And this is Jesus. When you see Jehovah, you're seeing Jesus. When you see Jesus, you're looking at God Almighty on this photograph before they had cameras, per se. He learns Jehovah is a lamp. Jehovah has given Understand his salvation will speak. Understand he's given. What does Jehovah always do? He gives. Jehovah has given. He's given. He's given. Salvation is a free gift. He's given us this receipt. He's given us the sun, moon, and stars. He's given us the 66 books. He's given us the plain text. He's given his only begotten son. God is a giver, 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 giver. Now, will you receive what he's saying in this free message? It's a free message. It's a wonderful message. Believe it, man. Understand his salvation will speak. And this Shroud of Turin is about to speak to a whole lot of Jews when Sean comes back and begins to show it to them. Hey guys, look here. This is Jesus Christ whom ye crucified. And his face is right here. It's evidently showed forth unto you. This is him. This is God. It's time for you to believe, man. And what's going to happen? The witness is a receipt. Behold, it will show us that it buried Jehovah. That this was what was placed on him when Jehovah was buried in Jesus Christ in that tomb for three days. Boom. This is the receipt of all that. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. What you see is a dead one. And boom. Right after that, we see the, the, the living one. So here's Jesus dead. His impression, boom, just as he's raising from the dead, explodes through that. And then he just comes right through those clothing. He dematerialized de and then materialized again. And those the, the cloths just dropped perfectly, and he folded them perfectly. And he had the uh, one long piece together, and he had the head napkin uh, in another location, folded. And that was representation to him that his job was done. Dinner is over. And that head piece is in France, and the whole piece that we're talking about, the Shroud of Turin, is in Italy. And I believe God's going to have the two pieces put together again. Sean Mitchell's going to be the guy carrying them around. You know, there's two of those witnesses. One will carry one, one will carry the other, and they'll be witnessing 
Amen. Praise God. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Hallelujah. He is to be praised. Let's read that translation again. We'll move on. He preached also with a declaration. Truly, it is the hour for the Most High to give light. Now, the Father preached it. He proclaimed it. Jesus, the son preacher, proclaimed it. It's, it's his impression. It's his message. It's his receipt. And then you and I get the privilege to preach it. And Sean will be preaching it in the tribulation. Sean will preach this also with the declaration. Truly, it is the hour for the Most High to give light. And y'all better believe it. This, this is God doing this. And y'all had better believe this is Jesus Christ. That his light exploded this impression in here. You see his blood? You see the red? That's him too. Time for you to believe. And they're going to have it shown right before him, man. The burnt offering of, uh, of God was pleasant. The radiance is burned into the shroud of Yeshua. The innocent one flowed. Oh, did he bleed. And you saw the redness. You will weep bitterly. Praise God for that promise, guys. They're going to weep because they're going to believe. Isn't that wonderful? And that's why we're praying for them. That's why Heather reminds us to pray for these people. Lord, draw them to you quickly. And we say, Lord, will you put this shroud in the hands of Sean and the other guy quickly? And so they can testify and these people can weep bitterly quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. As soon as, as soon as your will sees fit, Lord, we want it to be soon. Pray, guys, pray. Have part in all this. Have part in the salvations. Have part in the witnesses saying the right words. They're sealed of God. Pray for them. Amen. Uh, you will weep bitterly, Jews. My, does the Christian church weep bitterly over this? Or do they even know about it? Are they like me denying it because they were so smart? Because they were King James guys. I doubted this because I was a King James guy. The Lord got me away from being a King James guy to being a God guy, a Jesus Christ guy, a Bible code guy, along with the plain text, a second witness. Out of the mouth of out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let something be established. And here's another witness. They get four or five, six of them. Amen. Glory to God. You're going to weep bitterly. My beloved imprint is from Jesus, says the shroud. Obviously, not an artist. It's genuine. Jesus is light. Ascribe to God the sight, the evidence. Evidence of a fire. You'll see that on here, too, and we see that. Thus saith the Lord. The image is the face of Jehovah, the righteous one. And the payment was photographed twice. Jesus did it. First condo and secondo did it second condo. Okay? It was photographed twice, man. And now we're thankful that we have it. We, we have the shroud and we have the photographic evidence of it. Amen? Um, he's the righteous one and the payment was photographed. Yeshua, he learned Jehovah is a lamp. The Jew's going to learn all this. He's a lamp, and he's the one that exploded through this thing, and this is his impression. He did the work. He is the image. It's awesome, and they're going to believe. Jehovah has given. Aren't you thankful that he's given them this evidence because the Jews have to have proof? And so he left them this receipt, and they're going to be saved. They're going to see the red, and they're going to see the image shot forth, and they're going to see the face of their blessed Savior, Yeshua of Nazareth. He learns Jehovah is a lamp. Jehovah has given. Understand his salvation will speak. The witness is a receipt. Behold, it'll show us that it buried Jehovah. This is the very shroud of Turin. The shroud before it was of Turin, it was of Nazareth. It was of Jerusalem. It was of Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. They chose it and they wrapped Jesus. This is of him. This buried him. But up from the grave he rose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose the victor of the vast, the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. That's you and me. We're going to reign with him, man. That's what sets us, sets us wild out there. Amen. A perfect analogy. Where is the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail? We don't know of any Holy Grail. That doesn't matter. It was a cup made out of pottery. And uh, the Ark of the Covenant is, God knows right where it is. Okay. There's absolutely no excuse for anybody. God gives us all the proof. Amen. 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 All right. The Jews claim they know where the ark is, but I don't know if it's the genuine ark of Moses. 
Okay, that genuine Ark of Moses has been lost a long time ago, and it wasn't even in the second temple. That Ark of the Covenant wasn't in the second temple. Jeremiah hid it. All the priests hid it when they could, uh, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar had the whole place surrounded. And where'd it go? That's why uh, Liar over there, uh, whatever his name is, I can't think of his name now, who said he discovered it and the blood of Jesus was on it, was in Jeremiah's grotto. Jeremiah was the last one who had ever seen it and laid eyes on it that we know of. All right. Uh, Clay says, my good friend, er Ari Brooks, made the picture. He owned the famed books institute in Santa Barbara before he passed away a few years ago. A wonderful man, and I'm sure a believer, after he saw, oh, Ernie Brooks. After he saw, oh, the shroud in person. Wow, praise God. Great story, man. And guys, Clay, Clay, that's what he does for a living. He is a photographer. That is his life, that's his heart, that's his passion, and uh, he finds compassion in his passion. Amen. Praise God. Ron Wyatt, that's him. Thanks, buddy. Ron Wyatt. And so he claims he knows where it is and all that jazz, and it's become just more of a relic than anything else. And you and I, we're blessed to have the person, Jesus Christ, over a piece of gold and acacia wood covered in gold. We're so blessed to have the real. That was a picture of the real. Amen. And God, the, he may have an Ark of Covenant because he sits between the cherubs. But when Jesus gets here, he may actually have two angels sitting next to him. One might be Sean and the other guy. They're, they're the olive trees and the lampstands who stand before him. They, the word angel means messenger. They're messengers, aren't they, for three and a half years? The messengers in this book for ten years? We have seven years of Bible codes in this thing. You don't think Sean's a messenger just yet? When are you going to figure that out? When, when are you going to figure that Zechariah says he stands before the Lord? With the other guy, they stand before the Lord. Here they are. Amen. All right, let's look at another one, man. That was great. I love that code. I love that code, man. Uh, those codes changed my life. I mean, it's going to change your life. When you repent unto God's Bible code, it's going to change your entire direction more toward him. You're making your adjustments until you're looking at him right in the face. We say dead in the face, but in this case, it's alive in the face. Amen? Glory to God. And we've got uh, Heather here putting up this new one. Behold, apply depth to the shroud. It wasn't just 2D. It wasn't just a flat surface. When God delineated this thing and ordered it and commanded it, he said, I want it to be 3D. I want this picture to be 3D. And boom, when Jesus shot forth in that power and that resurrection, it's a 3D picture, almost like a sculpture. And they made a sculpture from it. Go hunt it down. The Shroud of Turin sculptures. And exactly Jesus' height and every dimension. His calves. His He was a muscular fella because he was solid. He was 33 years old and he did it walking all day long. Right? He walked. And we don't see that he was a glutton and, you know, pigging out in America. Right? All right, here we go. <clears throat> this is from October 25th, 2022. I got to look at this skip, dude. Because, man, this is a long... Oh, man, look at all them fours. Listen here. Negative. 44471. 44,471 from the bottom up. And you look at this, man. From the bottom all the way to the top. That's what makes the north and south end borders of this code is that opening text. The key. Let's see what it says, man. Be, this is just, just those red letters alone at that amazing skip of 444. Now, 444 is the book. 444 represents Sean in the book and the thunders. Okay? Represents this word of God, the unsealed word of God to us. You see that, what Tyvon put there? 44471. 71 is uh, Sean's mama's age when she went to be with Jesus. She was a prophetess, Linda. God, God, God loved this woman. God knew all about this woman and knew all about this son. He was going to allow to be placed in her womb. Had a call for him. So here we got 444. That's Sean. And we got 71. That's his mom. And I see it backwards. I see 17, me being the blessed guy to be able to preach these things. I see me there too. God's good. He includes us all, guys. You see you there? Okay, I see a 4-7. That's Miss Aaron. 
11's her big number. I see it right there. I see everybody involved here, guys. You're there. God has included you. He hasn't excluded you. He is going to reward you, okay, because you've been dutiful. Guys, you guys remember how the Christians used to write that in their songs? What was that line in that? Wonderful words of life. Something about teach me faith and duty. Yeah. They used to sing about duty. I have a duty to serve God full time, 24-7. And the Christian world has totally lost the duty. Uh, it's all about Jesus. He's my genie. He's my genie and I get to sit on my couch and with my room. Huh? Sanctified forever. Yeah. And here it is. Teach me faith and duty. Is that your heart? Lord God, please. Please teach me faith. I want my faith to increase. I want to please you. Teach me faith and duty, says Heather. Teach me faith and duty. Nobody wants to do the duty part anymore. They don't want to work for Jesus because well, I'm saved by grace. I don't want to have duty. I don't want the Lord to teach me duty. I'd have to do something if I had duty. All right. Hey, man, let's read what these red letters alone say at that amazing skip of 44471. Sean and his mom, the prophet and prophetess. Okay. Behold, apply depth to the shroud of Jehovah. See his miracle in the blameless one. He amazed, he, uh, be amazed at God's dense direct light. A furnace contaminated the sun, that fire. This, uh, because Jesus himself wasn't contaminated, right? That's why he rose from the dead at three days, because his body wouldn't see contamination. His body wouldn't see corruption. This is talking about the receipt is contaminated, amen? Uh, contaminated the sun, in whom is the radiance of salvation. Now, did that sound made up or forced or anything? Or does that sound like God speaking to us, encoded in the entire Old Testament at a skip of 44471 negative? Because the Jewish text goes from right to left, and Sean found this one going from left to right at this amazing skip all the way through the Old Testament Hebrew text at 44471 negative, telling us that first line. All right, let's see what Sean has to say. Behold the shroud of Jehovah, the miracle of God, written and signed by God. Four, four, four. Case closed, man. The word of God, the Bible code, sealed and unsealed. Four, four, four. And you'll see that in Sean's Facebook page. You'll see that at his PayPal link. Because God, God has taught him an awful lot about the four, four, four. Okay? And case closed, baby. Signed by God. God's signature. And here's the code by Sean, God's word in his dialect. Behold, apply the depth to the shroud, 3D. Apply depth to the shroud of Jehovah. See his miracle in the blameless one, Jesus. See the miracle in the shroud, it's Jesus. He's the blameless one. And he took our blame. God judged him for everything I should have been blamed for. And aimed at. He should have aimed his wrath on me. And he aimed it at Jesus instead. Because he took my blame. He took my shame. He took my penalty. He took my guilt. He took my sin. He took everything that I deserved. God the Father judged him. And he was the innocent one. What a great gospel we have, folks. Jesus loves you. Just believe it. Don't you add anything to everything he had to endure. It is finished in him. You better just believe it. Believe by faith alone in Jesus Christ of Nazareth alone. Once saved, always saved, or you're lost and going straight to hell, and you'll be there right next to Michael Heiser, freaking out because you were so self-righteous and just so sure of yourself that you wouldn't go there. And you're going to go there. Every self-righteous bastard's going to go there. You must be a son. You must be adopted in the family, and the only way to do that is by belief that Jesus paid it all, and it is finished in him. Amen. Teach me faith and duty. Continuing on here. Amazed at God's dense, direct light. Be amazed, guys. Be amazed. Let this startle you. Let this humble you. Tomorrow is big humble day. It's, it's, it's holy day. It's rejoicing day. Praise God, Lord. You're going to come blast this place. That means you're going to rapture us. It's a time of humility and praise. Great awe at the awesomeness of God and humbleness in the sight of the Lord. And he'll lift us up in rapture. 
Continuing on, a furnace contaminated the sun, in whom is the radiance of salvation. Turin is riddle. It's a puzzle. You know, just like everything else God does. Parables, Bible codes, Turin, one piece to the puzzle. It's a riddle solved. 444, 71. God's laying it down here straight at you, dude. Now, what you going to do with this? Oh, them just some more BS numbers and, and BS puzzle pieces. How about they're holy and they're righteous and they have been projected unto us since before time was created, before the world was created, from eternity past. God had this going on and knew all this would be here. And this is his love for you, dropping these hints, these breadcrumbs for you to believe. Now, will you finally believe the Bible codes? Amen? All right. A furnace contaminated the sun, in whom is radiance of salvation, and the shroud of Turin, guys, is one puzzle piece from the Lord. It's a riddle from God. God loves his riddles and parables. Don't blaspheme him and them. Psalm 34, 3 and 6, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Now, what is that? Um, how does that start, guys? Psalm 34, 1. Hmm. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let's exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me out of what? All my fears. He delivers us out of every mess we find ourselves in that we place ourselves in. Oh, that's quicksand. I'll dive in. Lord Jesus, Jehovah, help me. He comes a running. Aren't you thankful he comes running every time? He delivers us out of all our fears. What is all our fears? The opposite of all our faiths. It's our faiths that get us out of these horrible pits and sets our feet on a rock because we call on God who can do that for us. He heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth and then my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Thanks, Tyvon. Praise God. All right, let's look at that translation again. We'll go on to the next one. God's word in his dialect at that amazing skip of negative 44471. God's number. Bible code's unsealed number. Number assigned to Sean. 71 is mom. Big number. And I see myself there, 17. I see Miss Erin there at the 11. Praise God. And I see you there if I knew your numbers. You're going to be there somewhere, dude. All of you that had a part in this thing. Miss Adrian says, Amen, my faith has been strengthened and I'm assured of my salvation because it's by grace through faith. I accept the dispensations and have been meditating and understanding the ministry of Paul. Have, absolutely, praise God. Praise, that's where it's at, guys. That's the day you live in. You better embrace this, man, and quit living like an Old Testament saint and a tribulation saint. And you better just dig in there for the grace of God. The once saved, always saved grace of God. Amen? All right. Behold, apply depth, 3D depth, dimension. Apply depth to the shroud of Jehovah. Not the shroud of Turin, guys. This is God. They're just kind of holding it for him till Sean shows up on the scene. I'll have that. The, sh the shroud of Jehovah. See his miracle in the blameless one, Jesus. Oh, be amazed at God's dense direct light. Be amazed at the shroud of Turin, guys. A furnace tried to burn the thing to the ground, contaminate the sun, in whom is the radiance of salvation. Turin is a riddle. It's a puzzle. That means uh, God's fingerprints all over this thing. Do you see it? All right, guys, let's move on to the next one. This is October 25th, 2022. And this is at an amazing skip of negative 132201. And this, so it's going from the bottom up like a rapture. Okay. 132201. Let's see what we got here. What is that line? Sean Mitchell. Sean Mitchell is the code, is the, we call it the access term. He puts in Sean Mitchell, it comes up, and he sees this particular one at negative 132201 and says, hmm, okay, I see 322, two, that, that's amazing to us. On either side is a one, okay? And so, hey, I'll check this one out. I don't know what sparked his eyes because there's a lot of Sean Mitchells there, uh, but not so many that say both, both of his names together. A lot of times you'll have a Sean here and a Mitchell here, but when they're together, boy, that's rare yet. Okay, more, more letters involved, more characters. Okay, so this is at a negative of 132,201, and Tyvon's got that there, negative. And it says Sean Mitchell. Let's see what Sean has to say 
in his commentary here, October 25th. Sean says, I was amazed when I discovered this code on February 3rd, 2021. I saw our names standing next to each other. I recently added the Elul and the book. These are the terms that he added to the matrix. Elul, book. Because of the book. Bible codes unsealed. The book is the book. The little book in the Bible. Ezekiel and Revelation John. They ate. It was sweet in their mouth, bitter in their belly. That book, that's this book that we have our hands on, guys. You must understand this. You must understand how God works and how he rolls and what he's done here. The wonderful, awesome miracle. And you've been invited. Please received another free gift of God. All he does is give, 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 give. That's his M.O. Don't add anything to his giving, okay? So Sean, when he brought it back up, he began to look and he said, man, he said, there's an Elul and there's book. And these terms were then added to the matrix, but there's much more in this code. He says, my name and Yeshua will come. So Sean Mitchell and Yeshua will come. That's a rapture, isn't it? That's a rapture. It's also a second coming for the Jews. After the rapture, every time they see Jesus is coming, it's going to be the second coming of the Lord at the end of the seven-year tribulation. So Sean's name and Yeshua will come. They meet together at the Aleph Shin, which spells fire. Fire, right in the middle. The book is fire, the fire of God, the fire of Yeshua, the word of God. He's given it to Sean Mitchell to unlock. We have fresh fire. We have fresh manna, we say, when it comes down, when Sean gives us a new one. Okay? And they meet together at the, at the word fire. Our next destination is the judgment seat of Christ. That's the rapture. And then we go through the door, glorified. We've got to be glorified in the clouds so we can enter heaven. We enter heaven and go straight to the judgment seat of God, man. Judgment seat of Christ. Where our works will be tested in the fire. Aren't you thankful there is no condemnation for those of us that are in Christ Jesus? There's not going to be condemnation. He's not going to whip out a page. Oh, here, let's look at all your sins. He's not going to hold our sin against us. That was all held against Jesus. What this is, is a time of, hey, I know you forgot an awful lot of this stuff. And that's why it's still on my list. Because you didn't do it to be remembered. You did it to serve me and, and serve the Lord and to bless people in need. I'm going to remind you what you did because of the book of memories in Malachi 3.16. And they that feared the Lord spake often one toward another. And God hearkened. He said, whoa, I heard my name, Jehovah Jesus. I heard that. Okay, angel, get down there and you write everything they're saying. And a book of remembrance was written. And he's going to whip that book of remembrance out at the judgment seat of Christ. And bless you, bless you, bless you. For all the things you did in this body for him eternally. Everything you did in this body for yourself, for your self-pleasures. And um, I need a me moment burned up, ain't even making it to heaven. Only that which you did for Jesus Christ will last. Amen. Three, two, one is Linda. Amen. Cool. That's good. That's good. Thank you, G JB. I've learned more tonight. This is Julie. Hey, Julie. God bless you, sister. I love you. I love you guys. Love the fam. We pray for you. Pray for you every day, twice a day, just like the rest of y'all. We pray for you guys. We name you by name. And whatever the Lord lays on our heart to pray for you, that's what we pray for you at that prayer time. Amen. Praise God. Love you dearly. So, uh, so our next appointment is the judgment seat of Christ where our works will be tested in the fire. And the fire is the word of God. Whatever you did according to the word of God, will come out in heaven as reward from God. The word of God is the reward of God. Just like uh, the other code says, it is near and it's at the door. Rapture's here, guys, okay? Rapture's here. Rap we're in rapture season and it's here. What does John say? John 5, 24 to 29, verily, verily, this is Jesus talking red letters. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Belief, 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 and nothing else. One moment of you trying to work for your salvation, you are lost. You never did believe. You better believe 100% for Jesus. Everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Come up hither, the trump of God. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Woo, Jesus was talking about this while he was alive. He wanted everybody to believe. And they shall hear 
uh, they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him the authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which also all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. All the believers in the grave shall hear his voice. And even the dead at the end of the millennium, they're going to hear his voice too. Because everybody's going to stand before his judgment. One will be the judgment seat of rewards, and the other's going to be the great white throne of condemnation. Everybody who was condemned in their trespasses and sins and tried to climb up some other way, except belief, faith in Jesus Christ alone, they're going to be judged for their works, and they're going straight to hell with those judgments, man. And everybody's going to hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. The judgment seat of Christ and rewards, and the great white throne judgment, and going straight to hell. And here's the code by Sean Mitchell at that amazing 132201. Is the skip negative? Here's what it says God's word in his dialect. Sean Mitchell. Yeshua will come. Y'all see that comma? God's talking to Sean, says, Hey, Sean Mitchell, Yeshua will come. It is near. It's at the door. It drew near. Behold the terror. The day of the rapture is terror in the world. All the babies will go missing. The east coast of the United States will be destroyed. Tens of millions, maybe up to 100 million, will die and go straight to hell that night because of God's rage and his terror. Hey, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You better believe. You better believe God's way. You better believe these Bible codes God's way. You better straighten out. You better repent. You better turn to him and believe exactly as these translations say. This is God's word in his dialect. And he says, my, my day's coming fast. Hey, Sean, Yeshua will come. It is near. It's at the door. It drew near. Behold the terror. His day of fire. The true prophet with the wonder of the future. Now, that's these wonder codes. This God is referring to this Bible code right now. The 444, the unsealed word. You better believe it. You better listen. It, John has warned and warned and warned of that terror that's coming the night of the rapture. The rapture is a trap. It's a snap trap. You better be in that trap when the net's pulled up. Because everybody who's not in that rapture trap, who's not saved, you're going to have some terror straight ahead of you, man but not us. We will never have an ounce of terror again. We'll never have a bad day, a bad thought, a bad anything ever again. We will then be the head and never again the tail. We're going to rule with Jesus, his rod of iron. Believe that I be saved today because the terrors are coming and Sean documented it and he told us and he preached it. He hollered out. The prophet with the wonder of the future. That's, that's a prophet, isn't it? Who tells us about the wonders of the future. And we got it clearly here in this book. The book, God says, listen, the book is my light. See that capital M? That's God saying that book that you guys download, that's my light. That is my word. That is my heart. My light is a door in a lul. Hmm. September 1st is a lul one. Something like that. Somebody somebody bring up the calendar. Say Elul 2024. And let it pop up and you tell us what day of September Elul is. We know that Elul 29 is October 2nd. Okay? Elul 29 is October 2nd this year. So he continues on here. God is talking. He says, the book is my light. My light is a door in Elul. A rapture door. A judgment seat of Christ door. Door number four. We're hearing this stuff all the time. And we know that it is at Pentecost. Woo-hoo, bring on Elul. Amen, amen. Who with me? Who with me and not again me? Amen. Holla. The book is my light. My light is a door in Elul. Be amazed. You better be amazed. Who's amazed yet? Yeah, yeah, whatever. You better be amazed because God gave this code to Sean and then all of a sudden he set it, set it aside like he's done the other 2,500 that you and I haven't looked at. He's got over 3,000 now. 
And he set it aside, waiting for the Lord to, you know, give him spring in it. This needs to go in the book. This needs to be published or unpublished. Just present it. And he was looking over it again, and he found those two terms, book and a lul. Wow, that, that kind of changes the dynamic here of what I had before. Um, I, because do you guys think when God says book and a lul, it would change the dynamic, giving you a time frame and mentioning specifically the book is his? Don't you think that would kind of be mind-blowing? Does anybody have that calendar up here yet? A lul, 2024. Be amazed. He constructed my code with the computer. God don't have no code, said Dr. Michael Heiser while he burns in hell, choking on the smoke. Surprised as hell that he's in hell. That's what the Bible code said. He said there is no such thing as Bible codes. What do you say? Are you on Michael Heiser's side, your, his hell-bound, retarded side? Or are you on God's side when he says, uh, yeah, Sean constructed my code with a computer. The arrival, Linda. Linda is his mama. She's his mama and the witness. She witnessed these codes being made in her living room, dude. He showed them to her, hey, mom, look, look what the Lord showed me today. She loved him. She understood. She believed every. Everything that he showed her was from God. She had that much faith. Nobody knows who Linda Mitchell is. I, I don't know if anybody in the United States knows who she was, ever met her. I don't know if any, too many people in Canada knew her. God of heaven knows her. God of heaven knew John on the Isle of Patmos. God of heaven knew Paul in jail. It's whether or not the God of heaven knows you. And he goes ahead and throws her name in this humongous code. Monday, September 2nd to Wednesday, September 4th is, is the first day of Elul. Monday the 2nd to the 4th is the first day of, of Elul. All right. So Elul 1. You look at that Shabbat, Shabbat calendar and you look down there at September 30th. September 30th is the 27th of Elul. That's the day just before October. Is the 1st is the 28th of Elul. And October 2nd is the 29th of Elul, 629. Okay? We know that 30th is a big date because God has just introduced to us the right timing of the 360-day calendar that he talked to about Daniel. He talked about 490 years, 490 weeks of years. Okay? And now, uh, is, is, yeah, 490 years total. 70 weeks. Daniel's 70th week. A week is seven years. A week of years is seven years. So God talks to Daniel about these 70 weeks, these 490 years. And he said it would make it all the way to 483 of those years, and then the time would be stopped on that prophetic clock and because they would have just killed their king. Because the Messiah would be killed, but not for himself. He would be cut off for the sake of the entire world. Boom. His death stopped that clock. So does God's prophetic clock just stop? Or does he have a continual running prophetic clock? Because God's prophetic. Everything Jesus said was prophetic, guys. Futuristic. I'm going to go down to Jerusalem. I'm going to go up to see Lazarus. We're going to raise him from the dead. This was all done that God may get the glory. I know he stinks. I, I know that, but we're going to raise him from the dead. And everything Jesus said was futuristic, man. Everything. I'm going to go up to do our first miracle up here without saying it. We're going to go to this wedding here and I'm going to bring forth some wine out of some water. And uh, everything he said was prophetic because Jesus is prophecy, guys. You mark in your Bible as bold as you can get it where it'll stand out to you and everybody after you die, they can see it. Revelation 19 and verse 10 says, The testimony of the true Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the spirit of prophecy. And why is your pastor not preaching it? Because your pastor doesn't know Jesus. I'm telling you guys. Anybody who knows Jesus and is in communication with Jesus and know what he's up to is speaking about Nibiru over their head. They're covering it with chemtrails because if it wasn't covered with chemtrails, people would be coming in repentance in masses to Jesus. But they're not. 
they're waiting for football season to really get going. Preseason NFL is keeping them busy right now, and then all of a sudden those college boys won't be kicking off around the 30th or so. September 30th is the 27th. Now, September 30th to us guys is a big watch day because we know that that is the first 50-day count to the week, the first Pentecost, the true Pentecost count. Okay? Beginning on first fruits, counting 50 days forward on a Monday to Monday. And that 50 days ends on September 30th, the day after Jesus' birthday, September 29th, which is this year, Elul 26. That's kind of cool because September is 7, and you got 26 there. 726? Isn't that time, what time we start our Bible study every night thinking about the rapture? Arpazo. And then you go ahead there and you look at September 30th. And that's the 27th day of Elul. And you say that backwards, that's 726 as well because Elul is the sixth month of the year. Jesus' birthday is a 726. And the next day when we're looking at the 50th day count is a 726. That's kind of exciting, is it not? It is to me. Oh, be amazed, be amazed, be amazed at this Alul 4 door being opened. What is that talking about? All these calendars coming together and the Jews are going to know it. It's going to be obvious when Sean presents it to them. Alul. But it wasn't Alul. It was Savan. But it wasn't Savan. It was, you got all these calendars. It was September. We're looking at a high watch date of September 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th. And this 30th is looking as a doozy when we go across tonight's Bible code when it says what? Sean Mitchell, Yeshua will come. It is near. It's at the door. It drew near. Behold the terror. The day of the rapture is going to be terrible on earth. All the kids get to go with us, man. Almost a billion of them. Isn't that going to be great? That'll, that'll lighten the population load a little bit. Obama won't have to kill them. There will be, the depopulation will have just been fast-tracked by God, and they won't have to go to hell. They get to go to heaven. And they won't have to put up with all the abuse and the blood flow and the adrenal chrome and, and the torture and the pedophilia. God's going to save them all from that. Hallelujah. Oh, it's going to be terrible. His day of fire. A true prophet with the wonder of the future. You better... Fall in line with these Bible codes, guys. They're telling you everything, what God's going to do with America and even where wormwood's going to poison. The exact spots where it's going to poison, where it's going to land. You better get in line with these Bible codes. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, man. You better get in line with the testimony of Jesus, what he, how he's telling it. I love to tell the story of Jesus and his wrath. They don't write too many songs saying that, but I love to tell the story about his wrath because it's coming to a people that he offered his love to, he offered salvation to, and they refused him, spit in his face, and now they get the terror of the Lord coming their way. And we warned you and warned you and warned you in these books on this side, these seven thunders. And praise God, all you who survive it, who laughed at us on this side about believing in Jesus, you'll be on that side. And we pray that God doesn't kill you that first night, and that terror will lead you straight to him in belief. And you're going to humble yourself, and you're going to grab a hold of this book, and you're going to believe every word of it. Then, we like you to do that now. September 30th is the 13th day of Av on the corrected calendar. And that makes the 15th of Av the 2nd of October. And that is when all the guys of Benjamin went out and grabbed themselves a bride from Shiloh. Remember that at the feast? At the great feast? 15th of Av. Read that story. In the book of the Judges. Great. Thank you for that note. All right. So God continues. Guys, the book is my light. My light is a door in Elul. Be amazed. He constructed my code with the computer. The arrival, Linda. Y'all ready to arrive? Y'all ready to be some of, of arrivals? Going to meet our 
loved ones who've gone on before, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Miss Linda, she died. She didn't get to see, see the completion from this side, but she got a better view of it. Where she is, she's going to collect her body, and we're all going to arrive real soon. Amen? Amen. First Peter 4.17, For it is the time when judgment will commence with the house of God. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Praise God. I'm going, going to the Lord's house today. Well, his house is in heaven. You're going to get raptured today. You are the Lord's house. Where are you going? His ultimate house is where he is sitting on that throne right now, heaven. And we're getting ready to go see him. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. The judgment seat of Christ. And judgment on earth. Boom. From that throne, we're going to watch the lamb grab a hold of that scroll and start popping some seals, baby. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord, and it's going to take place on earth. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever, forever, forever, forever be with our Lord. Amen? Praise God. And remember, this skip is Sean Mitchell. It's at the skip of negative 132-201. We'll read the translation and call it a night. What does it say? Sean Mitchell... Yeshua will come. It is near at the door. It drew near. Behold the terror. The day of fire, a true prophet with the wonder of the future. That's Sean Mitchell. Jesus was a true prophet. Sean Mitchell's bringing you Jesus. Every Bible code, every word is the word of God. God's word in his dialect. The book is my light. This is God's book. This is God's word. Believe it, receive it, download it, memorize it, meditate on it day and night. Will we be able, uh, will we be allowed to hug the Father and the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. I don't know what that looks like, but he's our Papa. Our Papa loves to hug his kids. No man can see God and live unless he's glorified with God's glory. Then he can hug God. Somehow, Jesus is God. We're going to hug him for sure. Amen. Amen. The true prophet with the wonder of the future. The book is my light, says God, says Jesus. My light is a door in Elul. We have two 726 back to back. The birthday of Jesus on 929 and the 50th day count. On God's prophetic, his 360 prophetic calendar, the 50th day count to Passover, or, or to Pentecost. That's when the Holy Spirit started the church. And on the self-same day, is he going to finish the church with a harvest, a rapture, completed, fourth candle, done? I think there's a high probability of that happening. I'm going to be looking up. I'm going to have a watch night. I'll be staying up late to watch that one. I may stay up late on the 16th and the 23rd. That 23rd's big to me, guys. That 23rd is huge. God put it in my heart years before it ever got here. Four years. And here it is. Heather says, all these dates are coming together, man. That's God's intent. That's why we're still here. We thought we was going to be gone in Gregorian 2023. 2022. Gregorian. And God says, well, that's just one of the messed up calendars. There's still that synagogue of Satan calendar that's got to be fixed. Yeah. There's still that day of the week. Sunday is not the first day of the week. It's the seventh day of the week. Monday is the first day. Get it right. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, and by the way, what about that 360-day calendar that was mentioned in Daniel? Whatever happened to that after Jesus got cut off? Did, did it get cut off? Or did it continue on? Just with a different pattern, a different group, a different dispensation. The church as opposed to the Jews. The Jews were cut off and they were paused. Now we have the church age, the church dispensation, the wonderful bride of Christ. And when we get raptured, boom, that last seven years is going to click back to the old 360-day count. We thought we were going to be gone in Elul 2023. And we're just about to come to it. Now, did you hear what Heather just said? That's where we were headed with this whole night. Elul's about to start here in September 1st, or whenever it was, 3rd. 
2023 on the prophetic calendar. We're 2023 years since Jesus died. You take the dates. You, you put this in your own mathematics. You write this in your own notes. Jesus died on the cross on April 17th. On the Gregorian calendar, it would be the 15th, but you need to put the 17th in for time and date. And you put that in. 30 AD, April 17, to Jesus' birthday, or the 30th, the 50-day count, put it in there, which is to September uh, 30th, 2024. And you're going to come up with 2,023 years in about five months or something. Okay? 2,023, Alul. Check it out. Believe it. Everything's coming together. Apexing. Now, we're not saying definitively it's here. We're saying uh, have a high look up. Anybody want to watch with me? Anybody especially want to be up on Jesus' birthday that night? That Sunday night going into the Monday? Call in sick. Take a vacation day. We're about to take a permanent vacation, folks. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible codes crown will be an honor to lay at Jesus' feet. Hallelujah, buddy. I'm with you, Brent. Hallelujah. We believe, didn't we, buddy? Jesus said, that's my book. That's my code. That's my fire. That's my prophet. Sean Mitchell. It's his book. He, he added a little in book to this code to make it come alive. Boy, it's alive. It was alive before, but it was missing those two words. Every word of God is pure. Tyvon said, yeah, we were so sure a little was the rapture, but now we know it's on God's 360-day prophetic calendar. Amen. Alul, Av, the list goes on all the calendars. September, praise God. God said it would be obvious. Pray, pray, pray. Lord, make it most obvious. Make it most obvious with a solid confirmation. Can, can God confirm? Can God leave receipts? Can God leave 3D receipts that'll preach for eons? Pray, have your prayers. You have not because you ask not. Lord, show me. Oh, yeah, we used to make a birthday cake for Jesus before we knew the right date. <laughs> I'm baking a cake, man. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, it's not Christmas, folks. Don't go with Satan on this. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you. I praise you for everybody here. I praise you for the faithfulness in this small little flock. Thank you for the ones who are sleeping right now and will come on with eagerness to watch and to be a part of this. We thank you for our worldwide family. We thank you for your little flock, Lord. Thank you for our shepherd, our great shepherd, Jesus, our chief shepherd, Jesus, and our shepherd, Sean Mitchell, for guiding us through this stuff, listening to your voice. And thank you for his leadership. Thank you for his book. Thank you for letting us know about his being Moses and the Elijah. And uh, we're so excited for this to take place. We're excited to be in heaven. We're excited to Send him back. That send away is going to be awesome, Lord. I don't know what you got planned about that, but I know it's going to be humongous when you send him and the other guy back to earth. I can't wait for that. I'm excited about that. That's wonderful and awesome to me. And I pray for everybody here. I pray for people who have the wrong gospel, that you will convict them of their sin, righteousness, and judgment, that they must believe your gospel of belief, belief alone, once saved, always saved gospel. Burn this in their souls. Burn it in their hearts. Burn it in their minds until they repent and they've got it right. And for those that are saved, I pray you'll help us to keep walking with you daily in the Spirit, not after the flesh, not according to the flesh. Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect through your flesh? No freaking way. Lord, have us walk with you. Walk in your Spirit. Walk in your Word. Walk in the sweetness. Walk in hymns, songs, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in our heart to you. May you be real to us. May you be fire to us. May your word come alive and be wondrous to us as it is to you. These are your wonder words. We thank you for your wonder word prophet and uh, allowing us to see what you've given him. And we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, guys. Love you tons, tons, tons. So I want some of that cake, yo. Amen. George, Brother George says, Amen, Cush. Amen. Brent. Amen. Grapefruits, Brother. Kim. Amen. Amen, guys. I love you. It's been a, 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 just every night, every night's been a joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. See? She knows. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
Heather, appreciate your ministry, sister. Aaron, appreciate yours. God bless you. Amen. Uh, Carlos, amen, amen, amen. Get out there and street preach, bro. We don't have too many days left. Sister Adrian, amen. Brother Josh, bring it on, man. Bring it on. I saw your message while I was driving here today, buddy. I didn't get to follow up on that, about that East Mountain. Uh, Sean kind of thinks it's Ararat, one of those where the... Um, the exact mountain, I forgot, it starts with a T, where the boat landed. But uh, we'll get into that. That was a great question, brother. Um, amen. Thank you, Lord. Please give me understanding and patience. Hallelujah, Gordy. Amen. Don't, you don't ever pray for patience. You, you must not have had a good discipler. Because good disciples say, son, first thing you do is don't pray for patience. Because God's going to bring so much trouble, it's going to train you to have patience. Amen. We will pray for you in that, bub. We want you to have understanding. We want you to have patience. Brother Clay says, amen. Evelyn, hallelujah. Robert, buddy, I love you, dude. You ready to go to heaven, bub? Let's go. Let's go. God bless everyone. Love you all, and I love y'all. By his grace, we'll see you at the 726 tomorrow night. 726. 726. Jesus' birthday and the 50-day count. 726 and 627. Just put them the right way. God sees it from every direction. 726, 726, 726. By his grace, we'll see you at 726 tomorrow night. Love ya.